So if you ever wanted to build a power app where you've got multiple users on exactly the same screen, and then when one user does something in that screen, it reflects on every single user's screen instantaneously. This type of communication is called real-time communications and it's really popular. So if you think about things like chat clients, then a chat client will also be using this. So what happens is you type a message in and then that message gets sent to everybody else in the chat client. And this is something we did in our big global conferences. We had a global conference with 2000 users in the room. And when they typed a message, all 2000 users got the message instantaneously. And so you might think, why do you need this? Because I could do this with a timer control and a nice big fat refresh. So that might be okay for small time scenarios. So if you've got one or two users and the data isn't changing that fast, it might be okay. But let me take you through an example with Microsoft. So Microsoft a couple of years ago, probably five years ago now, because time moves on so fast. Microsoft introduced this thing called co-authoring in Microsoft Office. So in Word, if I open up a Word document and then one of my colleagues also opens exactly the same Word document, what you normally see is you can say, Fraser's editing this, John's editing this, Connor's editing this, and you can see the little symbols there. And that's basically going to be done with SignalR. SignalR is Microsoft's technology for allowing this real-time communication to happen. And so the reason you need it and you couldn't have something like a refresh control is just say we've got a two meg Word document open and I type in a new table on there. And as I'm typing, so what's going to happen? You want this to be real time and instant. As I'm typing, you'd have to have a refresh control inside of Word that goes every five milliseconds goes, oh, Mark's just made a change. So let's send the entire Word document up and let's send that all the way down to John Fraser and Connor's instance so they see my changes. But also what if they're changing it as well? All oh, right, we need to go and do that. And very quickly, you'll get to conflicts and synchronization issues because tons of changes are all happening at the same time and it becomes a, a real mess because you don't know what the real truth of the document is. And so Microsoft got around this and it's built on a technology called WebSockets and WebSockets is wrapped around something called Azure SignalR. You've got to think what is, uh, what is Azure SignalR. Very simply, the best way I can think of is explaining it it's like a telephone operator. I'm going to go through an example is when this power up screen loads, what happens is I've got a PCF component on here, which has a handshake and makes a phone call to Azure Signal or the operator and said, I'm here, I'm in this app, I'm connected to this hub, I'm ready to listen and I'm ready to send messages. If you do get any message from any of the other users, so anybody types into chat, give me a shout and tell me what they've said and I'll update my instance of the screen. And so the operator has the job of opening the call, staying on the line, and then when somebody else does something to affect that screen that you're interested in subscribing to, as your signal or go, right, there's a change. Here you go, 10 million users, and it's instantaneous. And so it's effectively just a glorified telephone operator. And to be honest, it's not something you need to code against. It's just something you install, which I'll show you in a bit. What have I done? On this Power App here, I've got a, I'll just show you first as a demo. I've got two instances of exactly the same Power App open and hap I happen to be obviously, because I picked up the current username, I'm on as both, but because they are two instances, as you can see, backwards and forwards. So if I go here and I go, hello world, this is a demo on YouTube, send that. Then in this other one, there you go, it's instantaneous, it's come through. Then if I, let's go pick a YouTube video, Let's go pick this one. I don't care what it is. I'm going to control C that. I'm going to show him up and I'm going to in this one, I'm going to paste that in there and I'm going to press enter. So I just pressed enter and there you go. And then, oh, it's coming this one as well. And so I've just got two here. I could have 10,000 tabs open here and they'd all get that YouTube video instantaneously within a few milliseconds. It's really fast. And so what's happened is when I type that in there and press enter, I'm sending a message to a signal to say, there's a YouTube, YouTube video, please. Can you then go and spray that out to everybody else that's also on the phone call? So it's really powerful and it's got some amazing uses. Like, a, for example, you might want to build your own chat. You could build your own game. Games is a big one because games can be very graphic intensive. And if somebody's driving around the corner, would you really want to send the fact that they're seen and they're driving around? You can't do it. So that gaming will use a technology like SignalR to send just the coordinates and the, and the speed you do it and all that to all the other players so you can race. It, it's a technology, it's definitely been born out of things like uh, gaming. 
it's also used heavily even video can be built on a signal line you can have like peer-to-peer -peer video sharing and audio so it's really powerful and so you can see for example here just imagine that we were a company that creates a lot of videos and we wanted the production team to go step by step through that thing and then add comments onto the video so we could all be watching this i could be the master and i could start playing this video here and i could pick that and because i'm seeking there i could pick that event up and say this dude's just forwarded to 12 minutes and it would instantaneously send it to all the other people to 12 minutes and then we could create comments again i don't really like that video at that point we need to change the color scheme or introduce a logo there so you've got the bare bones of a really nice collaboration app Another one, say you've got like a stock system and you want to see when something goes out of sale because you're running around a shop and you're managing an inventory and you don't want to do the whole time refreshing because it's going to hammer the servers. You could do SignalR to go, that's just gone out of stock, send it to everybody who's got the app open with the inventory screen on it. Dashboards as well, they're another good one. So there's millions of uses for it. It's the most efficient technology in the world. And so I'm just going to show you what I've done. So this is the Power App and just to break it down, I've got two container controls. In the left hand one, I've got a media player here. And then below that, I've got a text box, an input box, so that you can type in a YouTube URL. And then I've also got my signal R component. So that's where you do need to write a little bit of code. It is not scary, but it's a little bit of code. And then I've got a gallery control with all my messages on, and then a button to send a new message. And so you can see there what happens is set var. All I'm doing really is if you look at the signal R control, remember that, look here and look at the properties. I've got a property on my coded PCF component, which has the U URL for the Azure signal R service that I created. I'm running on the free one and that's, I think it's like a hundred connections and a thousand messages. It's perfectly perfect for testing this out. Then I've got another property, so which is bound to YouTube URL, so on change here, all I'm doing is I'm setting the YouTube URL to the text there, and that's bound to that property, which is also bound to looking on my signal R control to the property there. So all I've got is a YouTube in property. So if I, as the end user here, wants to send out a YouTube URL to all of the people listening, I've got an in, and then I've got an out, and that allows me to when somebody else who's got the app open on the screen sends a YouTube URL up to Signal R, what happens is the PCF control captures that and it sets this output one. So I've got an input and an output for both chat message and chat message out, and then also the person sending it. So literally, the, that's the one, that's the six properties that I've created in my PCF control. And the Power App is really simple. All it's doing is binding to these properties, and then everything else is taken care of itself. So the media here is bound to the property of the PCF control, the YouTube out. So whatever gets set on there, either by myself or by any other user that pushes up signal R, will play in here. So let's take a look at the next part. So we want to have a look at this here, this PCF control. So what I've got is a Windows VM in here. And let's pull up this one. <coughs> if you don't know what PCF control is, PCF controls allow you to create controls that extend power apps effectively. A lot of the out of the box controls that you get in power apps will also be PCF controls. Microsoft do this themselves. If you do know how to code, it's not that hard to be honest. There's three methods that you need to implement in it, which is down here somewhere. There's in it, which obviously is where you configure your environment and set all the connections up and set your properties up. Then you need to do update view. So effectively that says when anything happens in the framework, you need to do an update. And then there's another one here called do -do get outputs. When the framework wants to get the output from your control, it will call that at certain points of time. So it's just the framework calling those three methods. You just need to implement them three and you're good to go. The only other thing actually you have to change, you have to maintain this control manifest file. And these effectively are the way you define the properties that we saw in the Power App. So we look in the Power App here. These here all have a control manifest entry and it's all XML and you just define them like that. And once you define them, when you do a build, that gets converted into this manifest types DS, which gets included inside of your, there you go, it gets included inside of your index TypeScript file. And then that means you can then interact with those properties that the framework passes in and out. So that's how it gets properties into you.
like I said, I'm not going to go into the code too much detail, but I do want to bring to your attention the fact that when this thing loads your PCF control for the first time, I open up a connection and the connection opens up a connection to SignalR, which is like making the phone call. And then it sets a few events up here. So when SignalR calls back and say, oi, there's a new message, you need to process it. And there's a new chat message, you need to process it. That basically sets the properties back into the power app control, which then all of the other things are listening to and they can change. So what happens if somebody else on the same power app sends a message in, the new message hub will be called and then the message will be sent down and then the process new chat message will be bound, which then says go and build that gallery effectively. So the message gets sent on. The other thing to bring to note is the functions. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is functions. If you look in here, this is our signal R client. I'll mention that just before the functions actually. All I did is I went into Azure, I created a new signal R service. It's completely free, which I get, I say, I think it's 100 connections. Uh, it's perfect for testing. And then you get a dashboard here. The key thing you need to do is you need to click on keys um, because that gives you your connection string, which you need to use in your Azure function. So if we look at the functions. Uh, I created a new function app and there is three functions, I think, which should show here. So you've got negotiate, which is like making the phone call. You've got send chat message, which allows them to send a chat message. So it appears in that right hand side and then send messages is the YouTube bit, which I probably should have called send YouTube messages. And the reason I did that is because I added the chat message part in later. So I probably should have gone back and refactored that. but. Just know that send YouTube message. To see the, the code there very briefly, it's really simple. We look here, so this is VS Code. I created the functions in here, then I deployed them straight into that function app using the uh, Azure connectivity portal thing here, whatever you call it, I can't remember what you call it. There's your function app. That's the function app we're just looking at. And there you go, there's, you should see the functions in here as well. There you go, there's three functions. So I just use VS Code to deploy everything effectively. Just to show you that the Azure functions aren't too scary at all. So this is the negotiate one. Wow, that's really simple, isn't it? That just creates the connection into SignalR. And this is the one for sending a chat message. So it sends some headers down, it calls this hub, and it passes the actual message you've done. And then obviously the send message is the YouTube one as well, which sends the fact when they type in something on the input box of YouTube, that also gets sent. That might sound scary. So I just want to just very briefly explain how it's working again. So I've created a power app and on that power app, I've put a PCF control, which I've developed. And the PCF's control is effectively, its only job is to connect, pass the connection string to your function and also pass in YouTube in and receive YouTube out and pass in YouTube chat message in and receive chat message out. So it's the only job really is to pass those properties in and out from the Power App. So if, if something happens in Azure, the Azure function is connected to it and it will pass it out. So if a chat message comes in from another person, it will come in and it will change this chat message out and the same for YouTube. So the only job of this PCF is to connect up to the Azure function. I have seen examples where you could probably do this with uh, a custom connector as well. You could probably do it with an iframe as well, because all you need is you need to say, because this is a browser underneath, you need to open that connection and then listen to it with JavaScript. So you could do all this in JavaScript as well. <coughs> and then the Azure function is the intermediate between the PCF component to talk to SignalR that opens the connection, it sends the message, receives the messages, it gets broadcast back down to PCF component, which then get broadcast down to the Power App. So it's just this big uh, chain of messages going all the way from your Power App all the way to SignalR and down again. That's all it's doing. It isn't a lot of code. And if you do want to see how to do this, and I, I really do suggest you look into this because it's really cool when you've done it. If you can spend a couple of hours going through this and building it for yourself, I guarantee you'll be using it in your apps because it's awesome. If you want to know how to do it step by step, I'm in the process of making all of the sample projects. They're going into the Club 365 Academy. For our Platinum subscribers, you can get a seven day trial now if you'd like to. And with that seven day trial, you'll be able to download all the sample projects. And if you want to, you can hang around. If you don't want to, you can just cancel. It's easy. Seven day, it's completely free. Uh, but that's going in our Platinum exclusives area. And like I say, you'll get all of the 
I'm going to do a video which is step by step showing you how to do everything. You'll get all of the sample projects. You'll get the Azure Functions sample project. You'll get the PCF component. I probably, I'm probably not going to export this, but I'll show you how I pull it together because it is really simple. And then obviously I can't really do much about SignalR apart from just show you how I set that up because there's nothing I can export for you to import. And it, that really is, takes about five minutes, so it's really cool. My name is Mark Jones, and if you do join the Academy, I'd love to say hello to you. Hope that's of some help. Ta-ra!